I'm often asked, is it possible to be successful in fundraising if you're an introvert? Well, I'm here to tell you that introverts not only survive in fundraising, but thrive. But those who are successful do so because they have a grasp on a few secrets. Watch this video to find out what those secrets are. Stay tuned. For our first six months of employment with our nonprofit, we were tasked with finding individuals who would help fund our salaries and other expenses through monthly or annual gifts. It's important that you know right out of the blocks that I'm an extrovert. Meeting with individuals to talk about funding our work was fairly routine as I tried to roll with the punches and met any challenges head on. When meeting with individuals, I'd share our role in what we would be doing as well as an opportunity to be involved financially. My wife, on the other hand, is an introvert. The way she approaches raising funds was much different than me. She wasn't initially comfortable meeting with individuals to ask for money. That said, my wife is a very focused person and has had much success in all areas of her life due to diligence, persistence, and preparation. In our meetings, I would lead the presentations while my wife added important elements related to her calling to service and specifically her role and responsibility with our nonprofit. However, her preparation paid off when it was needed most. We entered this appointment just like all previous appointments, but within minutes of starting, I developed shooting pains in my side that continued to get worse as time went on. I began sweating and the pain intensified to the point where I was unable to continue and asked to be excused. My pain and unexpected departure were most confusing to prospective donors, but fortunately, my wife was well prepared to step in as my replacement. While only contributing on other appointments, she stepped in when needed most and finished the presentation without me. I knew this was an uncomfortable moment for her, especially since she had no warning and no idea what was happening to me, but her diligence allowed her to push through to finish the job in the clutch. If you're interested in knowing the rest of the story, watch until the end. You may be surprised at what happened soon after. But in the meantime, I've learned a lot of secrets from my wife and other introverts over the years as to what has led to their success in fundraising, and I'm ready to share those secrets with you right now. Secret number one, preparation. Some of the most accomplished comedians are introverts. Jim Carrey, Jerry Seinfeld, Ellen DeGeneres, Jay Leno, David Letterman, Conan O'Brien, Ryan Williams, Richard Pryor, and Drew Carey and many others are all introverts, but they all would say they owe their success to preparation. And the same applies to success in fundraising. It comes from meticulous preparation. Introverts tend to not do well in situations where there's uncertainty or where they must act in an impromptu manner. Preparation reduces stress and allows introverts to better manage or control a situation. For example, introverts are often seen as antisocial, when in reality they tend to fear large group interaction and often can do well in one-on-one -on -one appointments after getting to know a person. They're good at listening and cultivating relationships. They prefer one-on-one -on -one discussions or small groups where they feel more comfortable to interact and where they're they aren't thrust into spontaneous discussions without preparation. Introverts internalize conversations, take time to process the facts and nuances of, of a conversation. Introverts stand out at being circumspect and confidential. Preparation allows the introvert to maximize all these qualities and situations. Time spent in preparation and processing will almost certainly build the confidence of an introvert, and that's why it's an important secret to master. Secret number two, diligence. Webster's defines diligence as careful work or effort. Introverts who are successful in fundraising are diligent as they process through all the options to achieve a goal. They plan for every scenario and thoroughly think through the choices they must make. 
Introverts seem to find the best solution to a problem and strive to find answers. They perform their tasks with excellence and care. For example, introverts find success when they choose safe ways to get face-to-face -face with donors. This might include meeting first in groups in a setting like an open house or home gathering. They seek out other comfortable options like bringing along a board member or leader who's extroverted to begin the conversation and seek opportunities for the introvert to bring value to the discussion. If asking for a gift is too difficult for the introvert leader, they enlist the board member or other leader to close. Diligence may not come easy for the carefree extrovert, but most introverts are hardwired with this quality. Secret number three, persistence. One of the most important success criteria for anyone in fundraising is persistence. Introverts seem to especially understand this quality. Persistence is used to overcome some of the areas of perceived weakness, like being outgoing and free-spirited, qualities most attributed to extroverts. Persistence is likened to stick to itiveness and allows introverts to set aside emotion and to continue coming back to a current or prospective donor until the goal is achieved, obtaining a gift. Secret number four, ability to recharge. Whereas the extrovert seems to draw energy from meeting with individuals and loves being the center of attention, the introvert gets drained at parties and struggles with meetings where an appeal must be made. Introverts who succeed find ways to get away from everyone to recharge their batteries. After a weekend event meeting with major donors, a successful nonprofit leader who is an extreme introvert told me it takes him days to recover. Recovery for him and most introverts means solitude, not having to be involved in any lengthy discussions and even, in a perfect world, not having to talk at all. He gets recharged by reading a book or learning a new subject. Some introverts pour themselves into a hobby which pulls them away from the general public. Not all introverts need this time away, but my experience and feedback is that this is vital to their success. After a time of solitude, they're ready to get back into the battle, which in the case of someone successful in fundraising means calling and meeting with donors. Stay focused on the mission of your nonprofit and why it matters to you, and that will help keep you motivated. Then make sure you get enough time just to re-energize yourself. If you haven't already learned this lesson, try pulling away for a season after a taxing time with donors and come back again. You'll probably find your mind and heart have recovered and you're ready for action. This may be new to you, but I've found that most introverts just instinctively seek solitude after long periods of interaction. As promised, the rest of the story. It turned out that my appendix burst, and after a trip to the emergency room and a series of tests, I had immediate surgery to remove the organ, and within four days was back out on the trail of partner development. But a small scar on my right side is a constant reminder of the important role my wife, an introvert, played and continues to play in developing the funds and friends for our part in our nonprofit. Success in fundraising, if you're an introvert, is found in preparation, diligence, persistence, and ability to recharge. If you haven't discovered the impact these qualities have on you, the introvert, go deep to discover which of these qualities you have and to what extent. Every introvert possesses at least a few of these qualities and to different degrees. Find out your level of giftedness and it will truly impact your effectiveness. Introverts don't just survive in fundraising and development. Many thrive, and I hope you're one of those people. It's my desire that you found this video helpful. If you did, hit the like button and add a comment below, letting me and this community know your thoughts on this. If you feel I missed any quality, please share that with me in the comments section so that I can help our entire community get better. If you enjoyed what you heard, please subscribe to this channel and share this with your friends and colleagues. There's no cost to you. It's my hope that by subscribing, you'll learn principles and practices that will help you secure the resources necessary to accomplish your mission and change the world. Simply hit the subscribe button and click the all bell to be notified when the next video is released. 
If you want to find out what to do and say during a meeting with a donor, watch this video and raise more money than ever before and better our world. I wish you the best as you strive to increase income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.